Well, welcome. Um, Matt, it is wonderful to have you join our valuable leader conversation. Years ago, it was 2014, um, with our partner Telephonic at the time, we had the very first session on accessibility and digital inclusion in a side room. And now today, you, um, you actually, uh, several months ago, signed as the leader of the GSMA to join the Valuable 500. And, and most importantly, your commitment has been principles for the digital inclusion of people with disabilities. And I guess I'm, I'm just so intrigued. Why? Why did you decide to do it? And what kind of pushed you forward? And what was the research telling you, you know, about digital inclusion for people with disabilities in this sector? You know, we were the, I think we were the first industry to sign up to the 17 SDGs back in February yeah. 2016. Uh, every time since then, we have been working uh, tireless to try to uh, do our bit in it. And you can say mobile connectivity is really the foundation. It, it is a massive enabler effect to create uh, or, or to reach the goals of, of 2030 of these 17 goals. So we work, you know, with uh, gender equality, number five. We work with climate, obviously, number 13. So, so we work with all these different activities. And, and disability, uh, people living with disability uh, is, according to our research, roughly a billion people on the planet. And it, it sort of goes two ways. One, it's a, an opportunity for us to do more business, to be honest, but also to make sure that our technology can serve that uh, population, serve that, uh, that those people in a, in a much better way. And disability is, uh, to some extent, a, a forgotten area where we believe that technology can play a major role in augmenting the life, making sure that people feel more part of the community and ultimately can contribute more to society. And um, I think you said it right, it is an, an area where we traditionally not, have not focused that much, uh, but I think that is about to change. It's fantastic to start seeing leaders have a multiple layered approach to things like inclusion and sustainability and that interconnectedness where you're where and that's where the power is coming from when we're not siloing our energy or focus but seeing the overlap and i was really struck um when you were speaking at shanghai and you were talking about the extraordinary opportunity for us collectively to really change these systems but you also spoke about we need to make sure that this digital inclusion does not divide mm. or does not exclude when the industry says inclusion what does that really mean in your mind? And do we need to keep pushing what that means, like extending it out and seeing the overlaps? No, absolutely. And I, and I think with all new things, there is a, a big good, but there is also used wrongly a big bad. And that's what I spoke about in Shanghai, that we are at the fork in the road right now, that we could sort of as leaders continue down the road of anti-science, anti-truth, bullying, etc. Or we could take a different route where we would say it has to be science led, it has to be innovation, it has to be entrepreneurial, it needs to be new frontiers being opened up. And I think that's where we want to focus. And it sort of comes back to ethical leadership where we need to be able as leaders in today's complex world to focus on all three dimensions, on profitability, on the people dimension and on the planet dimension. I think you know our customers are certainly demanding that. Our employees are requiring that. Our shareholders are to an increasing degree demanding it as well. And the leaders in the tech sector, uh, mobile space specifically, are phenomenally skilled in delivering value in multiple different layers. So we need to continue to push this because you're absolutely right, there is a risk of a starker divide between the ones who have and the ones who have not, fueled by the COVID pandemic, where you and I, that are fortunate, we can still work, we can still sit at home, and we can still sort of be employed. Um, so, so we are the fortunate one, but you have a whole bunch of people that must go to work, physically go to work, and they are exposed. So, you know, we, we need to be able to bridge that somehow, be really, really mindful of how we deploy things going forward. So um, I'm registered blind and I've been at home in front of a, a laptop now for a year, like many people. 
And I got to tell you, it's really challenged me again about my own acceptance of my sight, because a lot of these platforms, for somebody who's visually impaired anyway, it's, it's very hard. It's really hard to see chat functions. People yeah. are hearing impaired. Yeah. It's like, I can't believe we're still at the stage that you have to say when you come on, I, I presume you have captioning. And you hear people going, do we? So are you seeing a move in this sector that we're, we're starting to look at accessible websites, platforms, communication hmm. as a move from niche to normal? Firstly, I think you, you are doing the most admirable thing that one can do, namely to be an entrepreneur. In my book, that <laughs> Trouble is, maker. No, no, no. That's the best thing. You're creating, you're creating something. So my hat's Thank off you. to you, really. You. But I, I do see that things are moving from just talk to action. And I see that in many different aspects, climate being one, and people are really being held accountable for, uh, you know, for their commitments. And, and uh, TCFD is certainly making an impact science-based target, uh, similar thing. With so so uh, disability again, we see multiple tools being deployed, but before it really rolls out and hit the masses, it takes always, in my experience, much longer time than what we feel is necessary or, or it actually needs to take. Uh, so um, be patient, be patient, but never, never, never let go of the push. You know, I, I think I love the fact that we are on this, all of us, we have to innovate and this is for the long game. And we have to be very careful not to cancel each other out in our intention to try and do better. Because if we cancel each other out, then that progress is not going to be made because particularly around disability inclusion in business is there's always a fear of getting it wrong. And that fear of getting it wrong is what's stopping progress. What do you think is some of the blockers for your peers or your leaders in, in this space who may not have joined communities like this, like disability inclusion? I mean, we've got incredible uh, representation from the industry we don't have from the handheld industry so what do you think is some of the barriers is it still fear uh, i i think honestly it's more awareness i don't think that there's really? anything yeah i don't think that there is anything that is uh, uh sort of stopping the the gadget industry to participate in an important event because it's really gadgets that will make or break this right that's true. Uh, so, so true. So, so they should really uh, be part of it. And I, I would be surprised if if we have a discussion with one of the vendors of handheld. I am sure that they have a whole bunch of ideas of how to develop and produce products that would be very suitable for visually impaired individuals or physically impaired, etc. People always forget that the remote control was designed for people who are visually impaired to watch television, which has been an oxymoron. We know that text messaging was designed for people who are hard of hearing or hearing impaired. So like, we know that that's there, okay? But how do we accelerate that change? How do we build that design, universal design in from the very beginning? And it's our belief that we need you, like we need the leaders, those leaders, that the leaders are strategically aware of this. Yeah. Do you think the leaders are aware of the extraordinary opportunity that we, probably conservatively estimate is worth a trillion that the 1.3 billion people who have a disability with a mom and a dad 72 percent of our global economy is worth a trillion do you mm. think the leader is aware of that because i think when the leaders are aware then then we amplify the change right then we see the scale yeah uh, i think that's exactly it then if i may i think events like mobile world congress in barcelona and shanghai is a great opportunity to showcase some of these uh, new technologies and we have done that in the past and it has always drawn huge amount of interest from developers, innovators and entrepreneurs to continue to develop new products. We have something called the Innovation City, which is a really cool space where we have sort of the latest and the greatest from the whole tech community uh, displaying what they are actually doing. And more importantly, you have um, made the great step to ensure that there's keynotes on diversity and inclusion. I think it's in your second day. Yeah. Um, and we are incredibly grateful for the Valuable 500. You're giving us that stage uh, with yeah. some of our Valuable 500 leaders. Really thank you for that. Because I think when, you, you know, when peers start speaking about this and start showing off what they're doing or sharing what they're doing or sharing their failures, it, may, it gives permission for everybody else, doesn't it? 
I guess my passion is um, that really inclusion is business. You know, it, we can't have sustainability without inclusion. You can't have inclusion without people with disabilities. It all is, is wrapped into each other. Yeah. And what is exciting for us or what I choose to be optimistic about is this is the business of disability. Disability is your business. This sector, probably more than any sector, can benefit from it. Do you see that the change is going to accelerate now in the next few years, probably faster than you thought it would around digital inclusion and accessibility for people with disabilities before the I, pandemic? I, I absolutely think so. I think COVID has had bad things, obviously, linked to it. But the good thing is that we are becoming much more tech savvy. The world is seeing that as a huge opportunity, but it's back to this fork in the road, right? That we need to be mindful. And I would argue that all leaders, especially those in Valuable 500, are aware of the fact that if we are not careful now, we will end up with a more fractured world after COVID than what we were before COVID. So uh, I think there will be a lot of emphasis on inclusion, getting everyone on board, developing products that is suitable, you know, to understand the real numbers in my co company. What is the real number I have of this disabled people? So that's that's the first step that one needs to take. And disabled customers and, and, and aging population. And disabled customers, no, absolutely. But that's the first thing. The second thing is, is then once we know that number, once we have facts, we need to develop a strategy around it. We say, okay, how can we best address the big numbers here? And once that's done, you just implement it. And it's really those three steps uh, that, that one needs to do. And right back to the beginning, it's about the intentionality to do that. Um, yeah. And yeah. I think for me, that is why all of you uh, as leaders, every single one of you coming up and having this conversation, none of you are saying you have it all right, but no. you're saying you have the intention to learn. Yeah. Uh, and I think to do that collectively in a safe space is, yeah. is how we're going to see the change. So I just want to say a huge thank you, Max. Really thank you. Thank you for the opportunity you're giving the Valuable 500. Thank you for encouraging your industry to, to become part of our family. We represent 80 million employees now and wow. like 64 sectors and 35 countries and 7 trillion in revenue. And it's leaders like you who are making this possible. And I think we truly can shake up this system. Um, so thank you. Thank you for your wow. leadership. And I really look forward to seeing you in Barcelona, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, I yeah, know. I would love to see you there. And, and uh, you know, thank you for having us. And, and really, congratulations to your leadership and to your commitment. We will see um, you in Barcelona. And yep. let's take up the system. So thank you very Fantastic. much. Thank you. Take care.